He just made you feel like things were going to be okay. It just, it didn't make sense to me. I couldn't believe it. I refused to believe it. And a friend came up to my room and said, gotta wake up, gotta wake up. Jim Gandolfini died. There are a number of notable actors from the gangster genre who've cemented themselves within this upper echelon of talent. Pacino has his Scarface, Leota his Henry Hill, De Niro his Jimmy Conway. These are films though. The big screen was made for you to give your all. A film's runtime is 90 to 200 minutes at most, just enough time to really empty the gas tank to give the best performance you possibly can. There's a stronger sense of urgency for you to land your scenes. It's not like television where you can come back the next week after a faulty performance and continue to steal the show. On TV, there's room for weakness. Beyond the pilot, there's always the next episode. But what happens when a television show is approached with the same urgency as a major Hollywood blockbuster? What happens when the actor treats his role as if there's not going to be a next episode? As if everyone's career is held hostage by this one single performance? There have been two characters in the last 30 years or so who have gone beyond this standard. Brian Cranston as Walter White and James Gandolfini as Tony Soprano. Brian Cranston is an incredible actor. His legacy is unquestionable, his performance in Breaking Bad unanimously praised, but you could not have one without the other. Would Breaking Bad have been made if we didn't have The Soprano? I don't think so. Creating a character like Tony Soprano was certainly paving the way to allow the space for someone like Walter White to exist. James Gandolfini is not a normal actor. He's an individual who completely embodies a role, immersing himself within a character to an almost unrecognizable extent. His passion for the art form is unparalleled, his talent on par with the Oscar-winning leads of the last century. Let me be very clear, James Gandolfini's portrayal of Tony Soprano is the single greatest commitment to a performance we've ever seen in the history of television. And the craziest part? This opinion isn't even all that controversial. Tony Soprano is in all 86 of the hour-long episodes, commanding 41% of the total screen time. A colossal task even for the most seasoned acting veteran. This was no easy gig. Acting isn't just shooting and waiting patiently inside of your trailer, there's an immense amount of prep work. Not only do you memorize lines, but you have to nurture the relationship with your cast and crew, work questionably long hours, and maintain any and all necessary training. Gandolfini isn't a stranger to challenges. He's been doing stage performances since high school, never really getting too involved with the art form until his mid-twenties, when a friend of his convinced him to take an acting class. This rekindled his love for acting, so much so that he packed his belongings and took his talents to the Big Apple. Keep in mind that James had a pretty comfortable life back home. He was nurturing a potential career as a bouncer and nightclub manager, but his dreams extended beyond being just another local success story. His first few years though were anything but ideal. James would move roughly every 10 months or so, stuffing his belongings inside of plastic bags and refusing to sign a lease because, well, he preferred the freedom of being able to come and go as he pleased. He worked gigs in construction and bartending to keep himself afloat, landing the occasional small budget film role here and there. This persistence eventually paid off when he received his first major role in mobster typecast, playing Virgil in 1993's True Romance. The film was a box office flop, but Gandolfini's role received critical praise, landing him a slew of other roles portraying characters on both sides of the law, including an audition for his most iconic role yet. Upon seeing his performance in True Romance, casting director Susan Fitzgerald invited him to audition for The Sopranos. His attempt would be less than ideal. David Chase said he stormed out after an initial attempt having stated that he didn't prepare properly. Chase was enamored by his bold nature and intimidating frame, and knew immediately that he had found what he'd been looking for. Gandolfini and Chase would go on to develop an almost harmonic relationship with one another. Their collaborations were hardly one-sided with Gandolfini insisting on adding his own spin to certain scenes or character habits. In the script, it was kind of, he was like fatherly, like, you don't want to do that and sell out. You got to stay with us and build a family or whatever. And instead, Jim just grabs me, you know, by the throat or something like that. And it became very menacing. I think David saw that and was like, oh, wow. 
that's the guy. Chase had tremendous faith in the performance of his lead, often allowing a number of these ideas and pitches to be adopted into the script. Chase never envisioned the Tony Soprano that James Gandolfini helped create. The character was originally shaped and molded through Chase's own personal trauma. My mother was sort of the model for Livia Soprano. And I used to tell people stories about my mother and the things my mother said and did. And then I got this idea of putting it with a gangster because to see a tough guy like that having to contend with a tough woman like that might be interesting. Chase provided the clay, Gandolfini was the sculptor. The shoes of Tony Soprano were hardly easy to fill. I remember telling a bunch of reporters one time, this guy holds up the show. I went, this show is great, it's because of James Gandolfini and everybody in the cast understood what I meant. Doing a show like that, do you know how much work it is for him, for a lead on any of these shows? These people work there in it all the time. And I never saw anyone work so hard at each scene. Tony has this insatiable anger. He's constantly imposing standards onto those around him, causing his soldiers to be on edge and ready to perform at a moment's notice. It doesn't matter if it's his relatives or members of his crew, everyone must adhere to his personal beliefs and be who he wants them to be. If they don't conform, he almost certainly flies into a fit of rage, sparing no one in his path. The only time this guard ever falls is when he's in desperate need of help or he's momentarily sympathetic. So how does one meet this level of performance without being too taxing on themselves emotionally. In James Gandolfini's case, he couldn't. The character of Tony Soprano warranted an intense amount of emotional upkeep, a demand that couldn't be met with simple line delivery or a brief psychological trick. He needed something more, something most health professionals would probably not approve of. Some of the things I'll use to get angry are lack of sleep will piss you off to no end. Sleep two, three hours a night for two nights before you have a really violent scene. Every single thing that anyone does will piss you off. I mean, I'll do a lot of weird things, bang my head on things. I mean, you know, you do whatever you need to do. You can put a rock in your shoe, a very pointy rock, walk around with that all day. Over a week or even months of shooting, a young Gandolfini could most certainly tolerate the task ahead given the time frame being somewhat reasonable. The issue was, production on The Sopranos lasted for eight years. What you see on screen isn't the bulk of his performance. Scenes are done several times to ensure the best possible outcome. Pair that with the reshoots and deleted scenes and the scale of this commitment increases dramatically. He wasn't exactly an ideal shape either. Gandolfini clocked in at around 300 pounds, though weight loss would have certainly helped to curb this health risk, it was completely out of the question. How important is Tony's weight? Should he be a heavy guy? Actually, it's important. It is. When I do get thin, which is not often, but when it does happen, I, I don't feel the same. I don't walk the same. He doesn't walk the same, you know, with that lumber. Yeah. It's important. I'll try anything to get where I have to go. As long as it's not going to hurt anybody. Gandolfini was in full service to Tony Soprano, even to the detriment of his own health. This, of course, wasn't the sole cause of his health issues. He was both an active drinker and cigar smoker. His weight also hadn't budged in years after the show wrapped. It's unfair to place blame on just the performance method he used, though it almost certainly contributed. Gandolfini shaved years off of his life in pursuit of artistic performance. Perfection. He gave everything to the character of Tony Soprano. The question is, would the ends justify the means? Did he do enough to grab the world's attention? Would his efforts finally be recognized? And the winner is... James Gandolfini, The Sopranos! James Gandolfini, The Sopranos. James Gandolfini. Only one television character has ever come close to competing in terms of cultural impact, a character that would have never been possible without the blueprint that was Tony Soprano. It's not limited to just Breaking Bad. The Wires creator David Simon stated that The Sopranos was a huge inspiration for him as a writer, and an influence behind some of the show's most memorable characters. The Sopranos essentially sparked a wave of television antiheroes, the resurgence of an entire genre, all led by one man's monumental performance. The show is still very much talked about today. There's active yearly conventions, a cult following both on and off social media, and the actors have branched out into a number of different careers. One man, unfortunately, did not get to see the full effect of his effort and influence. We don't have many other performances of Gandolfini to reference, but what we do have is most certainly enough to assess his range and talent. James Gandolfini wasn't a typical Hollywood actor. He was a father and a friend to everyone around him. I'm not Tony Soprano by any means. You know, it's an exaggeration of everything. Tony Soprano was his polar opposite, making the portrayal all that more remarkable. James Gandolfini's time in the limelight may have been brief. We may have never gotten to see his wisdom and his talent increase with age, but what we did receive was his complete and unparalleled dedication to the art form, to the characters, to the storytelling. He lived life in service of his craft. His legacy and influence is stronger than it's ever been before, and judging by the impact he's had, we won't see it fading 
anytime soon.